This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, I found a drummer and Kent found something streaming somewhere. You're not pissing on the I, drums, are you? Uh, I found a couple things streaming and I can't wait to talk about them. Uh, well, I guess we should we should probably do that then. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. Oh, that's the wrong screen. There we go. Uh, this is episode 276 for Thursday the 25th of February 2021, our final Thursday show, at least in the foreseeable future. Uh, this is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. Uh, no guests today. We will have one on Sunday, our new, new appointed day at not quite our new appointed time, but we'll get all that shit figured out. It's just, just watch for Twitter. You'll see. Um, yeah, man. I, I just found another complication. I didn't add the sound bed soundtrack to audition, so I'm gonna have to insert sounds into the into the file when this goes live. So yay me. Mm. Well, good job, Mr. Producer Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's on on DTNS today. I didn't start recording because I'm I do the backup recording. So luckily they didn't need it today because I didn't start recording the video or the audio until halfway through good day internet which is the little pre-show so mm. well yeah. sounds like a trend it's it's been a day it's just been a day. <laughs> yeah dude um so our good friend squidicus from the chat uh let me in on a, a new podcast that he had discovered uh barack obama and bruce springsteen are doing a podcast together. It's an eight episode limited series. Mm. And it is one of the most thought provoking things I have heard in a very long time. Uh, did you happen to listen to the the little minute and a half trailer that I sent to you? I did not. Um, because I wanted to hear it from you, not from them. But, uh, I have one question before I dive into this because it's probably going to entrap me. How much Bruce Springsteen is in this? Um, it's honestly, it's probably about 50, 50. Well, no, it's probably like more 60, 40, um, uh, Obama. Um, because he, he's the one that introduced the show. It's kind of like his, but he wanted to sit down and talk to Springsteen about just like life in America. And the first two episodes, they talk a lot about race and racism and where we are as a country, hmm. where we were, where we are, where we should go, that kind of stuff. And, okay. uh, Man, it's uh, very, very good. That's cool. Um, because I've never really been a Springsteen fan. Like even, even when I was younger, I was just. He's a he's he's like background music to me. Like I've never like fully explored his catalog, but right. I mean everybody knows "Born in the USA." You know what I mean? Like, right. it's just music that you you know you've heard probably thirty of his songs. And would recognize it as Springsteen, but right. I'm with you, dude. Like I never, I mean, I don't dislike his music, but I also like I never ever ever seek it out. <laughs> right, right. No, and and as far as I'm concerned, his greatest contribution is bringing Courtney Cox up on stage during his one of his music videos, uh, and that was the start of her acting career. So oh, that's trivia I didn't know. Holy uh, cow! You got to pay attention to these things, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, pay attention to what's important here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep your eye on the ball or the, or the cocks, as it were. Uh. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost just spit beer all <laughs> over my keyboard and monitor, and it would have been bad. Ah, uh, geez. So, breaking news, though. Uh, did you ever did you ever finish watching Avatar The Last Airbender? No. Well, you need to get on that because it's (laughs) fucking amazing. Uh, The original creators of Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra, I always say their names wrong. It's Michael DiMartino, I think is how you say it, and Brian something that starts with a K. (laughs) The original creators have signed a new deal with Viacom uh, to have a what did, what did they call it, uh, is it avatar studios or something like that um Cora studios yeah and this studio is dedicated to just making things in the 
uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender universe. And this is the and original, the... the original creators. Yes. Oh. Yep. yep. The guys, the the brain trust of Avatar, is uh, bringing some some new content out, and uh, they're starting production very soon on their first project, which was gonna which is gonna be a full length animated movie set in the Avatar universe. Now, I, I feel the need to explain myself a little bit because I can see Curtis Larock in the uh, in, in in the chat raising some some questions about how I haven't seen the uh, Avatar and uh, Korra. I am the only one in my house that doesn't absolutely love both of these properties. I just haven't put it on my priority list to watch it, although. I don't know anyone who has seen it that doesn't love it. It's one of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's actually, it's on my, it's softly on my list of shit that I won't watch because so many people have told me I have to watch it, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Um, But that, that is slowly fading. I did watch the first couple episodes and really liked it. uh, But I just never, never took the time to, to uh yeah. to get back into it. So it's like I said, it's it's probably the softest of my band list of things to watch. <laughs> yeah. No, it it's really good. So if you like the beginning, um like the beginning kind of starts out as a more of a kids show, more directed at, at kids. And then as the show goes on, it mature it's like I, I think the theory was that it would mature with its audience mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um and it gets really um Delves into some serious shit, and it's uh, it's and, fantastic. And from what I hear, so I, Korra is just ridiculously good. It's like they they took all the good things from Avatar, stepped it up, amplified it, uh, and, and just did more of it. Yeah, I mean, I I would say that's probably true. I am more of a fan of Avatar: The Last Airbender, but that's a preference thing. Mm. Um, but but Legend of Korra is also very very good. You hate uh, shit so I'm, cartoons, I'm, don't you? I hate what? You hate chick cartoons. Cartoons about chicks. No, not at all. No, 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 no. Cora <laughs> is very good. I'm just saying if we're comparing the two, yeah. like uh, I'm 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 all in on the original. Uh, uh, but I'm uh, very much looking forward to to seeing what this new stuff is going to be and it's going to stream exclusively on Paramount Plus. That's the only downside that means I got to get streaming service. Yeah, but at least it's a cheap one. And Paramount Plus, I believe, right, is the one that has the free tier, the five dollar tier, the ten dollar tier. It's the new CBS. Um, I'm not sure what the the tier pricing is going to be for that. Um, yeah. that pricing is the uh, Peacock. Okay. Okay. Uh, price model. But either way, it's um, only like five bucks a month or something like that. Like it's not. It's not. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be bad. I, I'm think I'm expecting like five ninety nine a month or something like that. Yeah. So just just give me my two week free trial at the end of season one of whatever they're doing with Avatar and I'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the first one's a, a, a feature length thing, so you can knock it out in two hours. And and <laughs> damn it, I'll be damned if HBO didn't wrap me in. I, I signed up to watch it for the uh, for Wonder Woman. And just never cancel it. And every time I go to cancel it, somebody in the house is watching something else on that damn service. So oh. we just HBO we, Max is is fantastic. We just have HBO Max now. Like that's that's just the thing we're paying for because apparently yeah, we, I, we all like it. I paid for the discounted six month uh, subscription. It was like it's like forty percent off or something like that. Right. If you pay for six months, and so I just went ahead and did that because I knew that. I mean, HBO's always got good stuff, and plus it's got the Warner Brothers catalog and the DC Universe stuff, and right. like it, the list goes on. So I was like, you know what? I'll, I think it'll be worth it for six months. And uh, the more stuff that that the more I explore that streaming service, the less likely I am to cancel it after that initial six months. Like it's yeah. really, really good. Well, I have the Wire, or not the Wire. Well, I have the Wire too, but I have uh, uh, the West Wing on my on uh, uh, on my Plex. And we're mm. watching it on HBO instead because it's just a much better picture. You know, it's all upscaled to 4K or, or HD or whatever the hell. Uh, it's got subtitles, which are amazing on a show that's very dense in uh, in dialogue. You know, because you're trying to watch the screen and notice what's going on and hear the dialogue and shit like that. So if you have the subtitles loose, you can kind of keep track of who it is exactly that's talking. Um, mm. 
I yeah, I just I I'm enjoying it, and I don't plan on canceling anytime soon. My wife and sister in law just watched uh, that new Denzel movie the other day. Um, so yeah, th- there's a yeah new Den- Denzel, Jared Leto, and somebody else is in it, and apparently hmm. it was really good, but my wife hated it because it didn't have a happy ending. <laughs> she likes happy endings, yeah. and it was it was more like oh. The Departed, where everybody fucking ends up in oh. a bad place. Well, I was about to recommend. Uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, but that's that movie doesn't have a good ending either. <laughs> that's that's what it is. It's Judas and the Black Messiah. Yeah. Oh, that's not. Wait, Denzel Washington's in that? Yeah, wasn't it Denzel and Leto? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya is the lead. Um, I don't think I don't think Denzel's in that. Uh, well, here we are doing uh, research live on air. Yes, that's as you do. <clears throat> um, starring uh, da, 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 da. and I guess Denzel isn't in it. It's got Martin Sheen though, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah, he um, yeah he he plays J. Edgar Hoover, and there is like there is no character redemption whatsoever for Hoover. Like it's just <laughs> bad. Um, he was a bit, but of, yeah, this, this, bit of a douche. This was a really good movie, though. This this movie was fantastic. And um, as a side note, Radiotopia has a uh, companion podcast for this movie where they introduce uh, or, or interview like the family and like people that were actually there. And um, man, is that good too? I was oh, wrong. Okay. It's the little things with Denzel and Leto. Ah, the little things. I'm not familiar with that movie. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Yeah. Um. I. So, I don't know, man. I'm still still watching old shit on HBO Max. Like. I I just watched Citizen Kane for the first time the other day. Really? <laughs> on HBO Max. Yeah. Yep. That is such an interesting fucking movie. It. It is, and I mean, it's worthy of discussion, but like. I understand how in 1941 it was like the greatest thing ever committed to film. Right. Um, it's definitely a period piece. It's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's fine. Like I, it's fine. Like I, I recognize the technical achievement. I recognize the acting and the story is strong and stuff, but um, yeah, I don't know. And, and I like old movies. Yeah. I'm not saying citizen came was bad by any stretch, but it was more, I felt more like I was doing homework than actually sitting down to like you know eat some popcorn and enjoy a movie. So I actually did it as homework, uh, listening to Current Geek. <laughs> it was one of their top hundred movies, and mm-hmm. before I listened to their them describe it, I went ahead and watched it and then listened to the episode. And um, I don't think they mentioned anything on the episode that I didn't notice on the in the movie, but mm-hmm. of course they articulated it better than I could have. Um, and yeah, the whole movie basically result re- revolves. It's a it's about an hour and forty minute movie, something like that. And it, the very last scene is when all of it finally comes together, and it's is basically just a huge circle. And it's, yeah, it's yeah, kinda, it's kind well, of a thing, long so, journey to get to a very short, uh, yeah. very short lesson. Well, so yeah, it was basically they they introduce a story hook which starts the story Mm -hmm. and then the end. Yeah. Like answers the the initial question, but like everything in the middle was just basically, uh, it was basically just like a biography of this dude. Yeah. And I, I mean, I guess you're supposed to look for clues in, in, in there, but there are, there are no clues. Like there literally is no clue. The reveal at the end is left field. It is, it is. And it fits. And at the same time, it's like, it kind of leaves you with, I just watched all of that. For this, yeah. You know? Well, and that's 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 what makes it kind of weird to me is like you feel like it's this big reveal that's going to mean something, and it means absolutely nothing. And right, the, we, the movie was good. Like the story of the man right. of of uh, what's his name, Charles Kane. Yeah, is interesting. It's compelling, um, but it has nothing. Like I don't. You could cut out the question at the beginning and then the reveal at the end, and it's the same movie. Well. Just cut, without that, <laughs> cut out cut out the question at the, at the beginning, 
and leave the reveal at the end and it's still the same movie. Yeah. Like yeah, the reveal exactly. at the end is it just flows this natural flow of the movie. Mm. It's almost like they filmed that and they were like, "Yeah, we need to bring some, bring it in a little bit." So we're going to throw a little brain teaser at the beginning just to kind of see how it goes, you know? <laughs> right. It's, yeah. Yeah. And and but yeah, the the direction and the production of that movie w- was fantastic. Yeah. So, um yeah. From from a photography standpoint and a cinematography standpoint, mm. I mm. fucking loved that movie. Uh, yeah, the use of angles and shadows were, were both compelling. Yeah, it, it was. It's almost a like a film noir without the murder and the the <laughs> the the cocky pi. You know, like it's yeah, it's got that that same kind of feel where it's a very fly on the wall kind of movie. Yeah. Well, speaking of noir, the next movie on my list is The Maltese Falcon. So, <laughs> oh, so you're just running down the list. <gasps> oh, yeah. 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 Every time I, I watch a movie or, or just like check it out or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, the, just below the description, it's got the more like this. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, add to list. Ooh, I, add to list. I ooh, have, add to list. <laughs> I haven't seen The Maltese Falcon either. Um, uh, and mostly I, that's on my list because the movie. So the movie is a fiction based on a real life fairy like folk tale of an actual item. So it it just like on its surface it seems really fucking meta to me and I don't know how my brain's going to process all that. Like see the little and little face twitch you just did? That's what my brain does every time I think of that movie. See, that's weird because I think as far as I know because I haven't seen it either. That's why it's on my list, but uh my understanding is the Maltese Falcon is just the, um, uh, crap. What's the word I'm looking for? What's the thing, the the random thing that you chase in a movie? Um, damn, come on, Curtis, help us out. <laughs> um, the like it really doesn't matter. It's just like it's just the name of the thing is what I thought. I don't know. It's not. We'll, a, we'll talk it's about not it a mulligan. Like a it's a. <laughs> because you're the only one in chat, Curtis. That's why you. <laughs> uh, Everyone else is just thing. sitting quiet. That's why. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, anyway, um, we'll 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 discuss Maltese Falcon on a future show. I promise you that. Yeah, I watched a few of those movies though uh, from that list, and some of them were, and I don't. One of them was about a woman that was going basically stark ass crazy mad and. I forget what the hell it was called, but that was irritatingly um, entertaining. Mm. Like, I didn't like that I liked watching that movie, if that makes any <laughs> sense. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, um, I shared with you a video of a drummer listening to Metallica's Enter Sandman one time. He talks it out and then goes and yep. plays it. He he had never heard the song before in his life. Somehow he went his whole life up till now, right? Having never heard the song, listens to it once, and then plays it with the drum track, like listening to this track with the drums removed from the track. Yeah, it it's it's really good. Like, it's it's interesting to hear him talk his way through the song and then to turn around and try to play it. And you can see hesitation in certain parts where he calls out, I'm going to have problems with that. Like, can't you yeah. didn't get to watch the whole movie, whole the whole video, 17 minutes, whatever, and you got it like two minutes before we went live. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, oh, damn. M. Beam is in the chat. Holy shit. Welcome back, buddy. Uh, oh, what's up, M. Beam? But yeah, it's... Uh, nice. it's, it's I enjoy drummers. I enjoy watching them drum and how they come up with different things. I watch videos on, you know, one song is given to three professional drummers and they all treat it differently. You know, mm-hmm. like that's that's a thing. And this was just one drummer who basically heard a song and then tried to replicate it, but you could see his own style creep its way in. And having drummed that song several times myself, like I was noticing when he was missing a beat or whatever, then he'd come in with a fill that I would never have thought of putting in there, mm-hmm. and it's it's just really interesting. I would I I want I want to catch more of that. I saw that 
earlier today and i definitely mm. want to see more of of what he does with songs and stuff like that it was really good it's like instructional yeah. and entertaining at the same time plus pff, fucking metallica why why wouldn't you want to listen yeah to that? <laughs> right yeah i enjoyed the two or three minutes that that i saw of it so i'm i'm definitely gonna check out the whole thing that's it's pretty great maybe we can do that in the in the post show and we won't get taken down by the uh <laughs> cmda or dmca or whatever the fuck bullshit they call it today yeah yeah the the uh copyright cops yeah the the copy cops <laughs> the the cock faces or something like that uh yeah all cocks are bastards um <laughs> Uh, dude, let's, uh, let's, let's move on to, uh, the next chapter of this, unless you have something else to recall over the last few days. No, man, let's go. All right. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kids done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. Are you still not hearing the sounds? Uh, no, I'm hearing the sounds perfectly okay, now. Okay. Okay. Audition yeah, isn't hearing the sounds, but you are. So I fixed one thing and fucked up another. Got it. <laughs> Typically how that goes. Yeah. No, oh, the good. woes of being a producer. Uh, yeah. Tonight's game sure. is called Amos Meets Archie. Thanks, Bean. So, Archie. Oh, hell yeah. You Thank mean you the, for the bits. Uh, now, are, 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 do you mean Archie the comic or Archie the stripper? Are, there's a stripper named Archie? Tell me there's not a stripper out there named Archie that like bends her back really, really far. And gives people a little <laughs> bit more of a show than they were expecting. Uh, oh my god, I absolutely pictured that while you were describing it. And you are no, welcome. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yes, Archie from Archie Comics. Uh -huh. So uh, Archie, um, I can't think of his last name now, but uh, um, Jughead is his buddy. He's got the uh, two girls, Betty and Veronica, that it, he's always. It's, it's um, Archie. Hitting I on bold, these. right? I. Oof. Yeah, I don't even remember. It's been so long <laughs> since I've read an Archie. But Archie over the years mm -hmm. has had crossover comic book interactions with several other, well, many other comic book characters. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to name a comic book character, and you're going to tell me if it really happened in the Archie comics or if I made it up. Okay. Are you going to give me a synopsis of the happening? Um, no. Uh, well, for one of them, I, I will, but I'm going to save it for the end. Okay. And are all of the crossover characters on the list of choices real comic book characters? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You will recognize every single name that I say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure, I want to make sure that I'm not just, you know, how, how far into your, your ass of, uh, of, of imagination am I digging today? Right, right, right. Um, okay, so your first one is uh, M Beam Superman. says Archie Starchy. That, that doesn't sound right either, but the fuck do I know? Right, yeah, exactly. It might be. I don't know. Um, Superman has Archie met Superman in a crossover comic. That sounds like a no. You are correct. That is a no. He might have met Clark Kent. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. I, what about? I, I, I'm just saying he would. I would see him more likely to meet Clark Kent than Superman. Okay. All right. Well, let's see if you have that opinion. The further we go down this list, let's see if that opinion still holds. <laughs> what about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Oh, totally. Totally. He probably said something stupid to April, and all the turtles laughed at him. <laughs> okay. All right. You're two for two. Oh. He did beat the Ninja Turtles. That sounds right. All right. What about uh, what about Spider Man? I hmm, yeah, I could see that happening. I could see Archie meeting. I could see Archie meeting April and getting sit and April getting saved by Spider Man, while Clark Kent reports on it from across the street. Mm, okay. okay. See, you don't give me a well, story. I'll give you a story. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds much better. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, no. Uh, Spider Man and Archie have never met. Okay, officially. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Your next one is Flash Gordon. Would he, would Archie even be fast enough to re realize that he met Flash Gordon? 
No, 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 no. Not the Flash. I'm talking about Flash Gordon, the uh, the football player that went into outer space and oh saved the galaxy and stuff. Yeah, the one I don't care about. Yes, you probably met Flash Gordon. <gasps> Flash. Oh, yes. Archie and Flash Gordon met. Probably doing lines of coke together. <laughs> no doubt. All right. What about the X Men? No, I can't think of an X Man that or X Men an X Men team member that uh, mm. was lame enough to put in an Archie comic. Hmm. Okay. All right. So you're saying no X Men. No X Men. And you are correct on that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and Beam says Gordon the, he- the Fisherman. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> What about Sonic the Hedgehog? That sounds like a crossover that happened on the back of a cereal box. Okay. Well, um, it actually happened in a comic book. So there's that. Uh, well, either way. Um, yes. So that one is correct. Uh, what about The Predator? No, that's that's how it ends, man. That, that hasn't happened yet. It's going to happen later. Uh, okay, so so is that a yes, is that a yes or a no? That's a no. Okay, you are incorrect. Ah. Archie did meet the predator. How the hell did he survive? Oh, he's Archie. They just keep bringing his ass back. <sighs> How about Batman? Um, I'm gonna say yes because he met he met uh super or he didn't meet Superman, so maybe he met Batman instead, and Batman kicked his ass too. Okay. Um, you are right about that. He did meet Batman. Did he mean Batman or Bruce Wayne? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure, but probably Cur- Batman. Curtis, am, Curtis says, uh, Batman. Curtis says money knows money. It's not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. My money. Yeah. My money would be on meeting Batman, but he probably met both. It would not surprise me if he met both Bruce Wayne and Batman. Yeah. All right. Uh, all of what Bruce about... Wayne, all of Bruce Wayne's friends have met Batman, and none of them fucking figured it out. It's amazing. <laughs> it's even more amazing that Clark Kent and Superman haven't been like discovered to be the same person. Right? Like, are you his, kidding me? He's one of them his... has glasses on. Like, he he sneezes me? one day, his glasses come off, and all of a sudden everybody's like, <gasps> "You look totally <laughs> different without glasses." Like, what in the shit, man? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, your next one is Spawn. I'm gonna say yes because I just uh, I have to say yes anytime Spawn's involved, except that shitty movie. Yeah, you are, you are, yeah, you are incorrect. Um, Archie never did meet Spawn. You know, there were two two good things out of the Spawn movie. Number one, the CG for the cape and the chains yes. was like cutting edge like yeah. that was some some like it was it looked really good and john leg was almost performance as the violator as the violator clown those were the only two redeeming qualities of that movie everything else about it complete garbage fire yeah I- including the soundtrack sh- i didn't even like the metallica song in the soundtrack oh that's right yeah the, yeah yeah the, the, song, yeah, the, the bell okay, tolls there was remix. a couple tracks yeah, there was a couple tracks that I kind of dug on, but like it did not make up for the rest of that movie. No, I haven't bad. even seen the whole movie. I've seen like five minute snippets here and there, and I, I, I uh, yeah, you, you no. can get everything you need in probably about ten minutes because that's all of Leguizamo's scenes, mm. and then you need to see like the like the first time that they really show you the uh, the CG for the cape and stuff. Yeah, other than that, that's that's about it. <laughs> or I have the entire Spawn uh, uh, run digitally on my computer, so I could just stick with that. Yeah, do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. That's, that's a pretty good, pretty good idea. All right, your final crossover. Okay. This is the one that you, the... you're actually going to give me some backstory on, right? Um, Maybe. Oh, okay. I'm not going to tell you which one. Oh. Your final one is The Punisher. I hope so. You hope so? I hope so. I, so, I, I, I yes? Think, I, think, I think Archie met him, and there was the one time The Punisher was like, no, just, I'm out of here. Well, congratulations, sir. You got seven out of ten. 
for 70%, oh. which means... Bob, tell him what they've done. You beat the D. Back to you, Daniel. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, yes. So you were right that I was going to tell you about the last one in the list. I have in my hand right here, it is called The Punisher Meets Archie. And um, it's issue one. It's, yeah, one of one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I really dig the back cover. It's got the Punisher's skull symbol, but with Archie's like facial features. Also skull. known as Evil Casper. <laughs> Evil Casper. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Um, yeah, this was um, this was a wild comic, man. I, I don't remember the entire story, but I do remember the basic plot was that Frank Castle was chasing after a guy that basically looks like Archie, mm -hmm. and he gets off a bus in Riverdale, and the Punisher, when he arrives, he sees Archie and mistakes him for his quarry, and hijinks ensue. <laughs> did, did, did he kill him? <laughs> no. Damn it. Everybody survived. Yeah. Oh well. But it, it was a fun comic and uh there's there's a lot of these like really weird crossovers mm -hmm. out there. What else? Um, yeah. Uh, all right, so this week we were talking about comic books. Kent, I know you have tons more to say about this. I would just say that I had at one time the first except for uh issue number 8. I had the entire first 40 episodes of Spawn. Was it eight or nine? So you, so you had this one? I Spawn I, number one? I still do have that one, actually. I still have the first... I have the first 13, except for issue eight, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. Do, somehow I remember you missing an issue, and I think it was eight. It's because I started collecting on nine... Which is the mm. first uh, the first issue where Angel shows up, and then a, I ba bought the previous ones, but eight was already sold out, and I just never got it, got my hands on number eight. Mm -hmm. So eventually, I just gave up and found them all on like a humble bundle or some shit like that. So now I have them all on <laughs> right on EPUB format on a hard drive. Yeah, right on. Um, I need to finish reading yeah. reading the story. It started getting a little crazy when they they introduced the countdown. Uh, and then the cape started taking over because the countdown got too low. Anyway, spoilers, right? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because he, um, like, every time he used his powers, he was closer to dying or something like that. Re returning to hell, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've got a small stack of, of books over here. I just want to kind of uh, uh, tell you about a couple of them and also just kind of get your reaction, uh, which the uh, that was the whole point of... Um, uh, having spawn here because I know that you were a spawn collector at one time. Uh, but I've got one in front of me. That is the only reason that this is interesting to me is so that I can show it to you. <laughs> what you got? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it is foofer. Number one. Um, this was a, um, not so good cartoon from the eighties. Right. Um, I mean, it wasn't bad, but it was just, you know, whatever standard, maybe perhaps slightly substandard cartoon. <laughs> um, but there's a particular reason that, that, uh, the name Foofer <laughs> is interesting to Foofer me. Foofer was the name given to my ex-girlfriend, Jen fell by, um, a friend of ours. Uh, did Charlie give her that name? Or was yes, I think Charlie, Charlie gave her that I'm name. Pretty sure Charlie gave nope. her that name. And Charlie was actually a previous guest on Ritual Misery. He was in the like somewhere in the double digit range yep. uh, episode number. So like six years ago or something. Yeah, uh, and Jen Fell now Jen Ellis I think has thus far mm. declined to to respond to my request for her to be on the show. Ah. I mean, I haven't asked her, but she's not said yes. So, yeah. 
All right, so the next thing, I actually, I was going through my comics, and um, I discovered this. I didn't realize I had this. I've got an issue of Vision and the Scarlet Witch. Oh, timely. Which, um, yeah, so I uh, I kind of flipped through it, because this is one of them that I have loose. That it's, not, uh, it's not in plastic, so I just kind of flipped through it. And a lot of the content in here is very relevant to the WandaVision TV series. There's some characters and some things happening in, in it that uh, I'm not going to give away spoilers here for those that haven't watched WandaVision, uh, but there is some definitely interesting stuff there. So that was a that was kind of a cool find. I have tons of this shit. Issue one of the Ray and Black Condor. I don't even know what the fuck these mm -hmm. are about, but I saw an issue one and I picked it up. Yep, and, like, I used to do the same thing. I, have, I found a ton of that kind of crap in my collection today. Uh, I have episode, or issue one, two, and three of the Ray, and issue one and two of Black Hondor, who's not black, by the way. Like, yeah, <laughs> right, that's right. Some gentrific gentrification bullshit right there. Can you have black Ugh. characters in a? Yeah. Anyway, um, and then here's a uh, here's some of my spawn spawn forty two. Hmm. And forty three, the, the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. Four, forty five. Like I got, a, I got a shit ton of spawn right here. That I didn't even realize I had in this little mini part of my collection right here. One, uh, one funny thing that I did while I was while I was eating dinner tonight, I, uh, I've got an old comic here, uh, from nineteen seventy eight, also not in a uh, in plastic or anything because it's in like really really bad shape it's got tears and things on the cover mm -hmm. it's an old spider-man book and the reason i wanted to look at it is because i wanted to have some nostalgia for these pages the the ads that were in the old comic books uh, these lasted for for quite well into the 80s and possibly even into the early 90s where they would advertise things like um uh let's see here we've got x-ray specs for a dollar 75 how about um, how about how about the Beetlejuice Game Boy game on the original Game Boy? Yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, a lot, in, yeah. A lot of the, the comics in, this in the nineties advertised of, Nintendo games. In this episode of Spectacular Spider-Man. Yep. Um, let's see. You can oh, you can send away for UFO files or uh, sorry, UFO photos from government files. You just gotta send three dollars to this address, and they'll send you some UFO pictures. Hell yeah, <laughs> that's a deal. Um, it's all kinds of stuff. You you can get an Atlas body in seven days. All about, kinds of amazingness. How about Star Trek: The Next Generation, the Medalla Imperative, or issue one through four, with with Hook nice. coming, coming nice. this Christmas on the back. <laughs> Good lord! <laughs> how about how about Superman number seventy five, aka the death of Superman? Yeah. I've got yeah. a few copies of that. Unfortunately, I don't have the one that's wrapped in black plastic, uh, which was like the collector's version. But I do have the collector's version of The Return of Superman in the white plastic. Of course. Have, have you read it? Um, yeah, because I, I got a, a not uh, like non-collector's edition version of it as well so that I could read it. <laughs> so, But I haven't read this one. This one is still sealed. Um. Yeah, I've got I got tons of these that are all put together in, in boxes. Here's one that my aunt Paula gave me, and she got upset because I didn't take it out to read it. But it, and it was worth five dollars when she bought it. It's Batman number three sixty seven from January of ninety one or something like that. Probably um, quite a bit earlier than that. Probably in the eighties. Eighty one, maybe. But I think it's the first time Poison Ivy appeared in this particular series or something. I don't know. Hmm. But I've never well, taken I've it got... out of plastic because I don't want to ruin the value of it. Well, I've got this one here. Uh, this is Batman number 497, where Bane broke the bat. So this is this scene was, was recreated almost exactly in The Dark Knight. Yeah. Or Dark, uh, Dark Knight Rises, where Bane broke the bat. Um, I've got I've got a loose leaf one like right here for reading, which is actually in remarkably good shape. But I've also got one in plastic that that was the the collector's edition that has the additional sleeve and the like embossed 
back cover. Um, yeah. This inc- incredible, incredible storyline called Nightfall. It was pretty good. Oh, and let's not forget the matchups. What if the Fantastic Four fought Doctor Doom and Annihilus? Ah, there we go. Did you did you ever read? I, I, yeah, actually, I found a, a bunch of what ifs in my collection. Uh, did you ever read these? Did you ever read this series from Alex Ross called Marvels? Uh uh-uh. uh It is one of the most amazing things I have ever read as a comic book. The entire story. It's a four issue series. And the storyline is basically the like when superheroes first appeared on Earth, and like it, it, the perspective is from like a common man. He's a I think he's a news reporter or photographer or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's just like him witnessing it as a regular person. Um, but what makes this remarkable is that every single panel on every single page is fully painted. These are full paintings by the artist. Oh, wow. And it's made into a comic book. That's and a, it is unbelievably beautiful. The, it is the so, art, so good. The art of Spawn is what originally got me into to comics in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, Todd McFarlane has a, a style I enjoy as well. And then how about this? This is number two. This is probably my most prized one because I never found any of the others. Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Oh. Episode Ooh. two. Very cool. That of course is Dragon Lance. Yeah. And on the back is a really kick ass picture of Raceland. Oh, that is cool. That is nice. Still in the red robes with the, the black creeping in his hand full of fire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I do have some more locked away somewhere. I don't know exactly where. They're in one of my many boxes, but that's uh that's pretty much my on the shelf comic book collection and i've read exactly uh three of these <laughs> and this, i've got um, this is why i don't collect for money anymore yeah oh well yeah i mean i've never really collected for the purpose of money not really um but like the whole idea of keeping them in plastic and whatnot is to keep them nice so if you do want to sell them you know right you can get some value out of them um, here's here's one that uh, most people have never heard of. This is Nightman. Part he was a verse. short-lived character, fairly short-lived character. Uh, but I really, 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 really liked him, and I think I probably own his entire run of of comics from a back when the company. One of the things that I really enjoyed about him is one of his powers was that he didn't have to sleep, and. <laughs> It seems so dumb, but if we're talking real life superpowers, that's your are shit. you fucking kidding me? That's yeah. that would be my go to superpower. I'd rather have that than invisibility, uh, ability to fly, like any of that shit. Like, give me the power to not ever sleep. Not exactly a comic, but this is one of my favorite things in my collection. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, geez, the forty fifth anniversary edition of. Playboy, Playboy magazine. Now, is that the is is that the cover that has all of the like all of the past yes um, covers? Yep. Put so, it, put into it, a put into a pattern that looks like uh, Marilyn Monroe's first. Right. Yeah. 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 So I'm not actually showing any nipple when I do this. It, it's a it's a Monet. It's a mosaic of pictures. Right. Yeah. Um, so don't ban me, Twitch fuckers. Um, the the final comic that I want to talk about is this one called Fantastic Four versus the New Fantastic Four. Um, or actually, I have that backwards. The New Fantastic Four versus the Fantastic Four. So basically, what it was is uh, the Human Torch, uh, Johnny Storm, was uh, so he accidentally killed somebody or like accidentally did something where somebody died as a result or whatever, mm-hmm. and the cops wanted him for questioning, like they wanted to arrest him. Um, and instead of doing the hero thing and turning himself in, he ran. So, of course, that makes you look guilty and all this other stuff. So a team of other heroes went after Johnny Storm to like bring him to the authorities. And that team was Spider-Man, the Incredible Hulk, Ghost Rider, and Wolverine. Mm. And this issue of this comic had one of the best comic book fights of all freaking time. 
uh, Wolverine versus the thing, Ben Grimm. It was freaking amazing. Wow. Anyway, that's I've got I've got other stuff here. Like I've got the uh, uh, like Jason Todd stealing the tires off the Batmobile and stuff like that. But uh, I'm not gonna go into all those. I think I've uh, nerded out enough on my <laughs> my little collection here. <laughs> What is, uh, is that, that's not Gen 13, is that? No, it's Angela. Angela. I don't remember Angela. She had a short run of her own comic by Image Comics after uh, after her storyline ended on Spawn. And epi- in the first issue, the first running of the first issue had this little cl- plastic card in it. I have mm. since lost that issue, but I still have the card that is a remake of the cover. And it is interesting. It's translucent, so if I take the white backing away, like you can oh, see yeah. through it and stuff. But yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's, yeah. Huh. All right. Um. Yeah. Little things like that, man. That's 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 my collection. I got like yeah. a a Joe Mana college card and shit. Like I got all kinds of random stuff in there. Nolan Ryan MVP. It's probably worth some money. Ah. Uh, yeah, I should have I should have dug out all my old uh, baseball cards and stuff for last week's show. Yeah, I, well, I always forget I have these because I'm just not a collector, so they're basically just sitting there, staying out of the light. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what my stuff is doing. I, I feel neglect. I feel like I'm the neglecting way. them because uh, because I don't have them in like a humidor or something like that. You know. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. Real quick. Uh, I wanted to share something I didn't. I didn't share this at Christmas time, and I feel bad. Uh, I got a Christmas card from Richard Gunther this year, and it had a little ornament that had basically the same design I'm about to show you. But here's some coasters. Uh, the 2020 Dumpster Fire. Oh, ha! That's fantastic. That's a collection of cork coasters, and uh, those will be here on my desk from now on because I recently rediscovered them. They were actually on my nightstand. I went to clean my nightstand. I was like, oh, shit, look at this. I forgot about these. Mm-hmm. So now I have uh, nice 2020 dumpster fire coasters. Oh man! If if you guys want some more of us talking about comic books, be sure to tune in on Sunday, this coming Sunday, the 28th at 4 p.m. Pacific, where we have as our guest Ryan Airy from Screen Crush. He's a big comic book nerd. He's a big Star Wars nerd. And uh, I guarantee we're going to be talking about some comic books and all kinds of other nerdy topics. I've got some interview questions uh, for him that I've cooked up. Um, it's going to be the conversations to some interesting places. I promise you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's this Sunday, February 28th, 4 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and that will be, well... We'll get to it next week, but we're we're our our normal streaming times will become Sundays. We're just trying to finagle the final last details on exactly when it could be four p.m. Pacific. So that should be enough time for everybody to get out of church, like <laughs> like, <laughs> like our audience goes to church. Yeah, like I don't think it's, that's <gasps> if they do, they go on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> the kids, yeah. No, actually, I'm, I'm sure we've I'm sure we've got a, a few yeah. church they, goers in our audience. So they, they not, catch, not to offend you, they, they if catch you, the uh, Wednesday. They catch the Wednesday sermon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pastor. We're gonna have to start coming on Wednesdays instead of Sundays <laughs> now. Ritual misery moved their day. Oh, <gasps> uh, ritual what now? <laughs> <laughs> ritual misery. <laughs> Is that a uh, is that a Christian show about the uh, about the pain Jesus went through while hanging from the cross? Not exactly. <laughs> oh, it's it's Mel Gibson's new podcast <laughs> about whipping the shit out of Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's even farther than I wanted to go, but I'm not saying you're wrong. Um, no, I. I so a lot of what I follow on TikTok are people that basically are defending other people's right to practice, but not their their, their supposed right to proselytize. And that's that's mm-hmm. where I'm at with it. Like, you do you, I'll do me. And if we happen to run into each other during the circles, then that's how we'll, you know, that's how we'll approach it. But until then, you keep you to you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We, yeah, let's not do each other. No, no. <laughs> 
No. That's, oh man, that's not how this it's, works, Kent. That's not how title, it has title works. selections. Title selection tonight's gonna be fun. Yeah. All uh, right. <laughs> so so let's get to it. Um, <sighs> RitualMisery.com for all the things that we do. Yeah, and you can also uh, monetarily support us over at patreoncom slash misery. Definitely, and there's some there's some interesting shit going up there here recently, and uh, maybe maybe some more. But uh, I keep teasing shit and then forget that I tease it, and then I re <laughs> I re tease it later on when I remember. So I should probably just write down all the shit that uh, that I've teased and well, maybe lots of tease, Amos. Uh, such a tease. Uh, <laughs> We are going to be live on uh, 4 p.m. Pacific on Sunday, the 28th of February. It's the last day mm-hmm. of the month. It's my it's the day before my anniversary. Yep. Yep, yep. Um and we appreciate you coming by, hanging out with us. I'm going to hit the button now. And we will remind you that Kevin McLeod does the music for the podcast, although others like Flavor Toothpaste and uh, Stephen Cogswell ha- and BBJ have given us the stingers and things like that. So many, many, many thanks to them. For Hell Kent, yeah. for you and for me, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. Damn it. It's the end of the month and I don't have any new names to add to the uh to the credits at the end. We need some more five dollar patrons. If you want your name at the end of the show, <laughs> go in there, hit up hit up a right. five dollar patron and get your name on there.